Howdy partners, welcome to Trippy Commentaries. We're gonna start off today's video with the epic battle, Snakes versus Alligator. Who will win? Get in there, Snake. Oh no, you're outnumbered, Gator. He doesn't look worried. Before I started recording, there was the battle between Alligator and Fish, and the Gator won that one pretty easily. But really, we're gonna look at what I believe to be the most mysterious location in all of Red Dead Redemption 2. This is Bayal Edge. The first thing we got to look at is the gator that's trapped underneath the cabin. Now, some of you guys may know this as the cabin of the strange man. If you come here four times, you can actually see the strange man. I'm going to cover that very soon here at the channel. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any theories. Of course, that is one of the more mysterious characters from Red Dead Redemption 1 who makes an appearance here in RDR 2. But if this really is his cabin, why does he have a pet gator? This thing is definitely dead. But why would you trap an alligator in the swamp? That's pretty messed up. Let's head inside the cabin. Now what we're gonna look at is the mystery of Jimmy Brooks. Here's the painting. Once you come here four times, this painting will slowly develop and then you have to look in the mirror to see the strange man behind you. And that's also the strange man's top hat. Again, I'll definitely show you guys that very soon. I have some exclusive information, but there's a lot of weird stuff going on in here. Some of you may remember the hoax third UFO appearance, which apparently was on top of that mountain. Now, I think that's in Mexico, which does not officially exist in this game yet, but hopefully that's some sort of clue towards a Mexican DLC. That would be awesome. Now you got the skull with the candles. I don't know if he's doing some sacrifices here. That represents the good karma ending, or the good honor ending, with the buck, and of course you get the wolves, for the bad honor. And that is what I think the Jimmy Brooks mystery is getting at, guys. You have this poem, and you can either keep Jimmy Brooks alive, or you can kill him. And this poem will change depending on your decision. And if you guys have been following me here at the channel, we are doing the 100% good honor playthrough. And I think there's going to be a big secret that unlocks once you get the 100%, but there's probably gonna be different secrets for the good honor playthrough and then a different one for the bad honor playthrough. So we'll definitely do a bad honor playthrough here as well. We got a thunderstorm brewing outside. So the poem says there was a man called Jimmy Brooks who was always running into crooks till one chased him down and he had to talk his way around that Jimmy isn't as dumb as he looks. And of course, it is talking about the crook who chased him down, which is Arthur Morgan. Now, when it comes to the other poem, I'm going to show you that one. And I'll also show you exactly who Jimmy Brooks is. So thanks again for checking out the episode. I do have a follow-up to the last video where we looked at the faces in the trees. So stay tuned for that. And also hit the like button, guys, as that is greatly appreciated. Make sure to sub if you are new. We're about to finish off the 100% playthrough and get full good honor hopefully unlocking a secret that is yet to be discovered. With that said, guys, let's look at the mystery of Jimmy Brooks. All right, now. Hey, there's that guy over there looking at us. Weren't Here's the infamous moment where we first hey, meet Jimmy no Brooks. Shit. So apparently he was in Blackwater. Well, you guys know about that so whole situation from guns, before the game right? starts no. and the gang well, has to flee Blackwater, well, something goes wrong. Well, this guy was a witness. He notices Arthur and then flees. So, of course, Arthur has to chase him down. And at this point in the game, Arthur's pretty much a bully. He's out beating money out of people. And he hasn't really evolved into the more heroic character that he becomes. It is your decision, guys. You have to make the choice to kick him off the cliff or to save him. So I think this is one of the more big choices when it comes to the good honor or bad honor playthroughs in the game. Now, of course, we decided to save him, and he rewards you by giving you a rare pen. So maybe there's something to the pen, but either way, the strange man is somehow witnessing exactly what's going on right now. I think the strange man, you know, some people view him as the Grim Reaper, some sort of spiritual figure. He's hanging down, and I just remember doing this for the first time. You know, you're looking at Arthur as just a savage guy, and you really want to kick him off. But it's one of those first choices that you have to make towards Arthur becoming a different man altogether. And really, I think it's Arthur's spirit that transfers into John Marston for the storyline of Red Dead Redemption 1. Do what you guys want. You can question him. You can kick him off. 
but your choice is going to change the poem that you can find at that cabin, which is interesting, right? There's not too many things that change just depending on one small decision that you have to make. And this is Jimmy Brooks. He's going to give us the pen. And I will also show you another Jimmy Brooks Easter egg that has been found at a different location nearby. There might be more to this guy. Okay, Arthur, I don't even think shakes his hand. See what I'm saying? I mean, at this point, Arthur is ruthless. You saved my life. You're we did save his guy. life, though. I, uh, here. You want a pen? It's one of them steel ones. What do we do with the pen? It's steel. That's very kind of you. Maybe we can get struck by lightning with I'm the pen? Good man. Jimmy Brooks. Now for the other side of the coin. It's time to sacrifice Jimmy in first person view. Sorry, buddy. So it calls him the man from Blackwater. Stay trippy. Bad honor. It really wasn't that far of a fall. I mean, you'd think maybe he'd just break his leg or something. But we do not get the pen. No reward. I wish you could take his jacket. You get the Miracle Tonic, and that's it. So you do not get the pen by trying to take it off his dead body. Just so you guys know. Maybe that's the game telling you that you really should do the good honor choice. But again, is the pen important? Is it just a random item like so many other things in the game? Here we are at the Red Dead wiki page for Jimmy Brooks. His quote being, you saved my life. You're a good man. So he's got his own Red Dead wiki page. And if you read history, it says, if rescued, Morgan threatens Brooks into not talking, who then proceeds to ride off. Brooks' final words to Arthur can be one of the lines he reflects upon during his last ride. So I think that's a major hint that, you know, that's an important encounter, especially when it comes to getting good honor or the negative bad honor. There's a poem about Jimmy Brooks in the strange man shack at Bayall Edge, chronicling either his death or survival, depending on whether or not Arthur saved him. And it says, if Arthur chooses to save Jimmy, he will give him a pen as a sign of gratitude that can only be sold for $10. So it's another one of those rewards you get that cannot be sold for much money at all. In fact, it's pointless. You might as well hold on to it, seeing as money does not matter too much in Red Dead Redemption 2 towards the end of the game anyways. So there's Jimmy Brooks, guys. And you got the two different poems. What does it say if we kick him off the side? Here are the two different poems with the second one reading, There was a man called Jimmy Brooks who was always running into crooks. But the man from the ferry found him very contrary. Now Jimmy's family don't see him very much. That is what you get if you kill off Jimmy Brooks. I cannot wait to do the Bad Honor playthrough. We're going to take out everybody, including Jimmy. And then there's some other information, of course, you might want to check out when it comes to Bay All Edge. Again, I'm going to have a part two to this video talking more in depth about the cabin and the strange man and his real identity. But when it comes to Jimmy Brooks... This also leads to another secret location and his name on a rock. Let's go check it out. You may have found this place before, Register Rock, right underneath the Heartland oil fields. And if you look at the rock, there are a ton of names on this thing. We've been actively trying to solve it. BM, I thought was Bonnie McFarland. There's Doyle from Missouri, Jasper from Munson, the Oregon Wagon Trail, Henry Matilda. So if you have any ideas on exactly what the Register Rock is pointing us towards, definitely let me know. But right there on the top, Jay Brooks, that is our guy, Jimmy Brooks, U.S. Post 1863. So somehow, whatever the mystery of Register Rock is, it looks like Jimmy Brooks is involved. And you can kind of tell that, you know, he's one of those characters that will probably maybe come around in a DLC or just have more importance. And there his name appears right on the top of Register Rock for us to see. Mary... You think that's the same Mary that Arthur was with? I think it probably is. D-O-F, T-Bart. There's definitely something going on with Register Rock, and I think it's even more crazy the fact that Jimmy Brooks, of all people, is involved as well. Let me know in the comments section below if you have any ideas. But Jimmy Brooks, I think, is an extremely important character and is crucial for the good honor or the bad honor playthrough 
here in Red Dead Redemption 2, and I think that we're going to discover something big once we reach that point. But that said, in the last video, we covered the faces in the trees. I'll meet you guys back there. There's one more thing I want to add to that video. If you missed it, I'll put a link in the description. I recommend you check that one out first before watching the end of this episode. Meet you guys back in Big Valley. I do want to talk about one more thing when it comes to the faces in the tree. So in the last episode, we talked about how these definitely represent the original people who came to America. You got the Mayans from Central America, the Vikings with Leif Erikson, of course, the Native American, the Indians. Now, I did say that this was the Eskimo. I did a lot of research on that video. And while some people are commenting that Eskimos do not have facial hair, that is not exactly true. It might be kind of rare, but I did find some pictures of chiefs who have facial hair that looks a lot like that. And if you think about it, living in the cold, you probably would want to have facial hair if you could grow it. But a lot of people believe that that is Bigfoot. And I do have to admit that that was my first thought. I did think that was Bigfoot as well. Now, it's more of a fictitious person compared to the other people represented in the trees. But maybe it is Bigfoot, perhaps the Sasquatch. Much love. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit the like button. That helps out. Subscribe if you are new. We'll have plenty of live streams. Make sure to stay trippy, my friends. Y'all come back now, you hear?